Hello, my name is Ryan, and today we will be discussing the toxic and therapeutic effects of varinostat on T lymphocytes. Varinostat, also known as super oil analyte hydroxamic acid, or SAHA for short, is a hydroxamic acid type histone deacetylase inhibitor, commercially available from Merck Laboratories as an orally introduced tablet known as Zalinza. Varinostat is prescribed as a chemotherapeutic treatment of persistent, progressive, or recurrent manifestations of cutaneous T-cell lymphoma. Varinostat tablets are ingested through the mouth, passed through the stomach, into the gastrointestinal tract, where they release their payload. The varinostat molecule exhibits a relatively higher hydrophobic characteristic than a hydrophilic one. The estimated log POW of this compound is 1.88, well within the range to be considered drug-like. This allows varinostat to cross the cell membrane of the GI tract enterocytes and be passed into the bloodstream for distribution. The relatively high pKa of 9.2 for this compound means that it will remain protonated and uncharged under the physiological conditions met within the body. The hydroxamic acid moiety of this compound contributes to a small polar region at one end of the long chain alkene tail. This slight polarity does not greatly hinder the absorbance of this molecule. However, the hydroxamic acid moiety does contribute to the histone deacetylase inhibition function that we will later discuss. Many of the histone deacetylase inhibitors currently being studied are derived from plant and fungal toxins. Varinostat and trichostatin A are two such inhibitors. As you can see, these compounds share a very similar structure to the delicious hot pepper toxin capsaicin. Once in the bloodstream, varinostat is quickly bound to serum proteins such as albumin and begins its systemic distribution. Approximately 71% of the absorbed compound finds itself bound to these carrier proteins. Varinostat is capable of undergoing two different metabolic processes for its elimination from the body. These processes typically occur within the serum during the distribution process. The first process of metabolic breakdown occurs via phase 1 metabolism. Varinostat can be oxidized, likely by a dioxygenase. This leads to the production of 4-anilino-4-oxobutanic acid following cleavage of the alkane tail. 4-anilino-4-oxobutanic acid recovered accounts for approximately 36% of the original varinostat dose. The second metabolic product from varinostat detoxification is the result of the conjugation of varinostat with UDP glucuronic acid. This conjugation occurs in the liver and is catalyzed by members of the UDP glucuronosyl transferases. The varinostat glucuronide metabolite accounts for approximately 16% of the original varinostat dose. Both of these metabolites are inactive and are soon deposited in the kidneys for excretion. Varinostat is primarily excreted in the urine in the form of one of the two main metabolites mentioned earlier. Less than 1% of the unmetabolized varinostat compound is excreted in this manner. The activity of varinostat as a toxin falls primarily on the unmetabolized varinostat compound, making it not only a parent toxin, but an effector toxin as well. The target of the unmetabolized varinostat compound are tissues and cells that exhibit disproportionately high expression and activity of histone deacetylases. The association of histone deacetylase activity with many of the mechanisms conferring carcinogenesis is one reason why histone deacetylase inhibitors, such as varinostat, are being studied as potential anti-cancer drugs. Histone deacetylases, or HDACs, are part of a binary control mechanism for the secondary modification of histone proteins. HDACs are organized into four classes and two subfamilies. The classic HDACs comprising class 1, 2, and 4 are characterized by their use of a zinc divalent cation as a cofactor for the cleavage of acetyl groups. The class 3 HDACs contain the sirtuins. These use an NAD plus cofactor instead. Varinostat acts as an inhibitor to the classic histone deacetylases. The genes of the DNA wrapped around histone proteins can be up or down regulated 
depending on the secondary modifications of the histone. Histone acetylation is one of those modifications. When HDACs act upon a histone protein, they remove the acetyl group from a lysine residue on the histone tail. This gives the histone protein an overall positive charge and allows for the negatively charged DNA to associate more closely with the histones. The close association between the histone and the DNA leads to an overall condensation of the chromatin structure while triggering proliferative and migratory pathways of the cell, typically seen in most cancers. Alternatively, the histone acetyltransferases, or HATs, add acetyl groups to the histone proteins and reduce the amount of packing of the chromatin structure. This process can aid in cell differentiation and apoptosis. Here, varinostat is being targeted to a T-cell lymphoma. T-cell lymphomas occur when there is a dysregulation of the cell proliferation pathways of T-cell lymphocytes. This can lead to the formation of large subcutaneous tumors and eventual metastasization. Varinostat exerts its mechanism of toxicity through its interactions with histone deacetylases. The long chain attached to hydroxamic acid is able to competitively inhibit the histone deacetylation function of HDACs by entering the active site and chelating to the zinc divalent cation cofactor. This inhibition decreases the HDAC activity while histone acetyltransferase activity remains the same, leading to the hyperacetylation of histone proteins and an overall increase in the percentage of loosely packed chromatin structures. It is important to note that histone deacetylase proteins, under normal functioning conditions, do not cause cancer, but are in fact important regulatory proteins in eukaryotic growth and development. In conclusion, the toxicity of varinostat tends to demonstrate selective toxicity against cells that are exhibiting disproportionate HDAC activity, while allowing normal cells to remain relatively unchanged. It is these properties that make varinostat an interesting molecule for the study of HDAC-mediated regulatory functions, including growth and development, in eukaryotic organisms. Thank you.